There are some strange creatures in the ocean, like this one that'll make you think you're hallucinating, and this intimidating eel. First though, let's talk about one whose mouth never closes. Number 10. Fangtooth Though they spend most of their time in the deep, fangtooths have been observed migrating to the surface at night to pursue their preferred prey of crustaceans and other fish. Instead of being purely ambush predators, fangtooths are more active than many other deep-sea fish and actively seek food. Their enormous mouths and extremely long teeth allow them to attack prey found in the vast, food-poor deep sea. They are dark in color, either solid brown or black, and unlike most deep-sea fish, they lack the light-producing organs or cells for communication or attracting prey. Instead, they depend heavily on their sense of smell and benefit from any amount of sunlight that makes its way down to the depths. Though the light is insufficient to see, potential prey species may cast a shadow as they pass overhead. In those circumstances, this species appears to have a bite-first, ask-questions-later mentality. Though they look and appear menacing, we truly have nothing to worry about. Why? Because they're harmless to humans. They live in the deep sea and only grow to about 7 inches long. Number 9. Leptocephalus larvae Leptocephalus larvae are some of the most beautiful and conspicuous animals we see in plankton images. Eels, bonefish, ladyfish, and tarpon are all members of a diverse superorder of fishes that start their planktonic lives as leptocephalus larvae, which have long, laterally compressed bodies that are nearly transparent. Scientists believe that this type of larva is relatively primitive, implying that fish have been using leptocephalus larval forms for millions of years, most likely since the Cretaceous period. Tarpon and bonefish larvae differ slightly from the standard leptocephalus form. Tarpon and bonefish larvae, unlike eel leptocephali, are thinner vertically and have a well-developed caudal fin that they use to swim. Most leptocephalus larvae, also known as leptos, have a large set of protruding teeth. Because their guts appeared empty, the diet of leptos was a complete mystery for a long time. Now, we know that their primary food source is marine snow. Experts in situ imaging work has revealed that leptos are abundant, particularly in the northern Gulf of Mexico. They also exhibit various complex behaviors that may aid their survival in an environment of intense predation. Number 8. Sea Sapphire Copepods When you first see a sea sapphire, you might think you're hallucinating, because in the beginning you might see one bright blue flash which will last for an instant before it's gone. Then you'll see another flash, but this time from another place. Your eyes are not tricking you. What you might have witnessed is a sea sapphire. Among copepods, sea sapphires are an exception. They are stunningly beautiful despite their small size. Like their namesake gem, sea sapphires come in various colors, ranging from bright gold to deep blue. They are found all over the world, not just in Africa. You can see some on Rhode Island and Californian coasts. When there are a lot of them near the water surface, the sea looks like diamonds falling from the sky. This type of water was known to Japanese fishermen as tamamitsu, or jeweled water. Surprisingly, only males flash, whereas females make crystal palaces made of barrel-shaped jellies. The reason for their flashes? The crystal plate inside their cell is about the same distance as the wavelength of blue light. How cool is that? Number 7. Hatchet Fish the deep-sea hatchet fish gets its name from the shape of its body, which resembles a hatchet. It belongs to the family Sternopticidae. There are approximately 45 different species of hatchet fish, ranging in size from 1 to 6 inches. Hatchet fish are among the many deep-sea creatures that can generate their own light via a process known as bioluminescence. These fish have photophores which are special light-producing organs that run the length of their bodies. These photophores generate light through a chemical reaction similar to that of the terrestrial firefly. Because these light organs point downwards, they are thought to conceal the fish from predators via counter-illumination. This means that they can adjust the brightness of their underside lights to make them nearly invisible against the dim light above. The light patterns created by photophores differ slightly between species, leading many researchers to believe that they may play a role in courtship, though very little is known about these mysterious creatures' mating habits. Not much is known about the hatchet fish's life cycle, though many researchers agree that this species only has a year to live. Number 6. Stoplight Loose Jaw The stoplight loose jaw gets its name from the two specialized light-producing organs beneath each eye. One is green and the other is red. Producing light in these two colors improves the stoplight loose jaw's ability to see and attack its prey. Because most species cannot see red light at those depths, the red organ is precious. 
A red crustacean, for example, would be easily visible in red light, even if the crustacean could not sense the light itself. The stoplight loose jaw's long, needle-like teeth and distinct jaw also ensure that no passing meal is too large to miss. Scientists believe that the stoplight loose jaw stays in deep water, unlike some closely related fish that migrate to the surface at night. Like most deep sea species, the stoplight loose jaw is extremely difficult to study and is only known from specimens recovered from deep nets. People don't eat stoplight loose jaws and there is no evidence that humans negatively affect their populations. However, because the deep sea is known to be a changing environment, scientists must continue to monitor the vast marine habitat. Number 5. Strawberry Squid Strawberry squids are a type of small cockeyed squids. The scientific name for these squids, Histioteuthis heteropsis, comes from their two different sized eyes, one small and blue, the other large and yellow. The large eye is thought to be used to see objects in low light, whereas the smaller eye is better suited to viewing bioluminescent light sources. The squid's common name arose from its rich red skin pigmentation and the presence of photophores along its body, which gave it the appearance of a strawberry with seeds. In general, H. heteropsis is found at ocean depths of 200 to 1,000 meters, which is part of the ocean's twilight zone. The species spends the day at lower depths and migrates up the water column at night. Clyde Roper and Richard Young discovered this when they found that most H. heteropsis were located at 500 to 700 meters, whereas at night they were mostly found at 300 to 400 meters. The Pacific Ocean is home to these squids and is predominantly found in the California and the Humboldt Current. You can see more in the former though, as the species doesn't inhabit waters near the equator. Number 4. Threadtail Fish Deep sea fish, the threadtail. It is the sole member of the genus Stylephorus and the family of Stylephoridae of fish. It is found in deeper subtropical and tropical waters worldwide, where it lives at depths during the day and migrates vertically at night to feed on plankton. Although its body only grows to 11 inches long, its pair of tail fin rays triple its length to about 35 inches. It has tubular eyes that look like a pair of binoculars. It has a tubular mouth and sucks seawater by expanding its oral cavity to about 40 times its original size. The water is then expelled through the gills, leaving the copepods on which it feeds behind. So, in a way, it's like a self-filtering straw. Time for today's best pick. It's hard to think that this fish isn't upset with the perpetual pout stuck on its face. Perhaps it's because of its confusing history. Find out what it is next. Number 3. Whiteface Waspfish The whiteface waspfish, also known as the white-belly roguefish, rougefish, or Richardson's waspfish, is the only species in the Richardson nichthys genus, a genus of marine rayfin fish belonging to the subfamily Tetrarogini. The genus was first described in 1958 by J. L. B. Smith, a South African ichthyologist, with the only species being Apistes leucogaster. A. leucogaster in turn was discovered in 1848 by the Scottish naval surgeon, Arctic explorer and naturalist John Richardson, with its type locality given as the Sea of China. In the fifth edition of Fishes of the World, this taxon is included in the subfamily Tetrarogini within the Scorpidinae. Smith, though, named the new genus Richardson nichthys after Richardson and prefixed it with the Greek word for fish. The specific name Leucogaster means white-bellied, referring to the species' white ventral surface. This fish has an Indo-Pacific distribution. You can often find it off Tanzania and Mozambique, in eastern Africa and Madagascar, the Seychelles, the east coast of India, and from the eastern Andaman Sea. It lives between 26 to 295 feet underwater or somewhere where corals are. Number 2. Snipe Eel in the Twilight Zone's fish-eat-fish -fish world, creatures tend to strip away all body parts that don't serve them. The snipe eel has taken this evolutionary asceticism to the extreme, reducing its body to a mere filament at the end. The only place where the anus of the slender snipe eel would fit is on its slightly wider throat. Even though they are thin, snipe eels have a strong backbone. In fact, this species has the most vertebrae of any species on the planet, with approximately 750 on average. Snipe eels spend their scarce biological resources on relatively large eyes, the better to see predators in the dark ocean. Their dark brown or grey bodies blend into the murk like many Twilight Zone dwellers, but they don't have bioluminescent bells and whistles. This streamlined eel also eats efficiently. Its beak-like jaws are curved upwards and thus remain permanently agape, allowing the eel to swim through the depths on mealtime autopilot. 
A small crustacean will eventually end up in the mouth of a snipe eel, where tiny backwards-pointing teeth prevent the prey from escaping. Number 1. Hagfish Few people would include hagfish on their list of most charismatic marine species because they are slimy, eat dead things, and have rows of tooth-like structures straight out of a horror movie. But their strange and slimy existence may be part of what makes them so appealing. The hagfish swims along, slick and jawless, in a sea of happy dolphins and peaceful sea turtles living its life. To know them better, here are a few facts about the hagfish. For one, they don't have jaws. They are primitive fish, so they haven't changed much from millions of years ago. They don't even have a spine. Their skeleton is made up of cartilage instead. This creature is also extremely slimy. This is because they have plenty of glands that secrete slime made of sugar and proteins. When you touch the slime, you realize it's a hundred thousand times softer than jello, making it hard to hold onto. Finally, the hagfish isn't picky about its food. I mean, it eats dead animals. I'm not sure what to tell you, they'll even be the first to scrape tissue from the carcasses. Whew. 